Okay, let's take a moment and read this question. This is uh, going to give you that case study for an emergent writer. Uh, remember, in emergent writing, we start to see the use of letters, in addition to drawings, in the writing. So uh, pre-literate was just scribbles and in symbolic letters. Now we're going to actually see the formation of letters. So the child has had exposure to um, some early, early, has had exposure to the alphabet and has practiced uh, forming letters. So take a moment now and read about this uh, four-year-old student. Go ahead, take a moment, read to yourself, go. One minute. Hopefully you pause me. So make sure you pause me if you haven't fully read it. Okay, here, here we go. I'm gonna read it because it's, uh, if you'll notice, it is a short, crisp question. The what we got, what we have uh, two sentences here, right? This is a a a two sentence question. So the scenario is very short, and the answers. Look at the answers. The answers are in phrase form. So in terms of linguistic complexity, team. When I talk about linguistic complexity, I'm trying to make a distinction between uh, questions that are have a high linguistic complexity, really wordy, and questions that have, you know, a, a lower linguistic complexity. The thing is that the questions with the lower linguistic complexity, uh, it's not like they're, um, they have less ideas in them, right? It's just the question um, is able to capture those ideas in less space, right? I mean, there's still the same amount of ideas in this question than in the bloated long question. And, and, and when we have a long, wordy, complex question, our goal is just to chop it down into a more basic question like this. So, so sometimes it's helpful to study a basic scenario, and, and that way we have an idea of how to paraphrase the longer ones into something more manageable. Okay, so let's just read this one. It says here, four-year-old Kima draws a picture of a girl. She then writes the letter K all around the edges of the paper, remarking, this is my name. It says Kima. This behavior suggests that Kima has attained some understanding of, all right, so there's a lot of key ideas here. And then we have these things, function, function of print, how to decode words, the alphabetical principle, track and how to track print. So four ideas there. I, you know, in phrase form, they're able to still get those ideas out, just not in an extended sentence form. Okay, so first clue four years old, right? So remember, four years old in preschool, pre-kindergarten, we got three to four, four to five, right? These are the years before kindergarten. So this child could fall into any one of these ranges, right? Right there. Um, they would have had exposure to the alphabet. You know, or they would have had exposure starting to learn the alphabet. And, and they would have had exposure to, and obviously she's had exposure to some type of letter formation because she's she's forming, right? We have some forming letters, is that right? She's doing some type of letter formation going on uh, with that letter, initial letter of her name. Okay, uh, in the clue, it says that she draws a picture. So there's a picture and there's letters. Now she's not doing inventive spelling. So it's not like she's, she's using the so the reason why it's not C, and I had a, or initially when I did this, I had a hard time with this one. The reason why it's not C is she's not using, um, she does, hasn't mastered the alphabetical principle enough to uh, do some type of inventive spelling. And, and and the name actually would be the first thing a child spells. Out of all of the words out there, whether they know the alphabetical principle or not, right? Think about it. Your name the child's name in your classroom before they even know how to write or before they even know how to spell, they learn their name, right? And they learn how to spell their name. That's part of that. That's an activity for early emergent writing. And in fact, all that's something that you practice every day. Yes. My preschool teachers out there and kindergarten teachers out there are like, yes, yes. So, so really she doesn't even, even if she hasn't, finished or completed or, or started the alphabetical principle, she would have had exposure to writing her name. Agreed? So that's the reason why it's not the alphabetical principle. Because 
we would see more uh, letter letter matching, letter sound correspondence matching, especially with the with the name, right? So, so I would think so for that reason there, that option's out. Now that's that's outside of the right answer. That's the closest one because it's this is not an issue of tracking print, right? She's not going from she's not tracking the print. She's not writing it and she's not reading it from left to right. So that's not going on. And this isn't really an issue of decoding because she's really not decoding anything, right? She's just saying, uh, writing her name all around the page saying, uh, that's my name. So what is she indicating? Okay, well, this is interesting. She's at this stage here and she's using letters and she's using this letter to convey an idea. And this idea, um, it's different. It's an idea, conveying an idea that's different than what the picture is doing or the drawing is doing or the photograph is doing. The idea is being communicated through uh, early emergent writing, right? And so she has this awareness of the function of print. So she knows that the letter is starting to communicate an idea. It's, it's, it's moving in the direction of writing and it's conveying something beyond just the picture or drawing. All right, team, I like this question. Um, look, it's, it's, uh, it's short, but it, uh, it, it, it gets all the ideas. So it's a good question. Good, and, and, and you know what? Half the teachers are gonna choose C, yes? Uh, that's, that's like, but they're gonna get it wrong. Um, and, and you gotta remember this, you know, a child at the age of four, you know, they've had exposure to their name a lot. She is not trying to spell her, I mean, She's she's not she's not doing any type of letter sound correspondence or using the alphabetical principle to match up any of the sounds she hears in her name. You know, we would have seen like something like that, maybe or uh, or something or s some other variation. OK, this is uh, this is just her communicating that 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 letter is another way of communicating the idea outside of the drawing. Great question. Now. If you want more of those questions, you can take a look at some of them that are here on this practice exam. The answer is A for this one. And look at all the great vocab you get to review. This is uh, an example of emergent writing, right? In that writing stage, you uh, where you got to remember the, the features are letters and drawings. And uh, she's getting the initial letter. That's good. Okay. Uh, um, we start to see print awareness. This is uh, an awareness that that her writing carries meaning, and that's the function of writing. It's it's a, another way of conveying ideas. This is not a phonics case study yet, or an alphabetical principle case study yet, um, and it's not a tracking print. But we get exposure to those ideas. Okay, all right. Let's go to the next stage of writing. Okay, let's keep going. 